Hi, I'm John Swanson. I'm a senior manager in the solutions group at Synopsys. And what we're going to show you today is how easy it is to build an AMBA interface subsystem using Core Assembler with the DesignWare IP. Okay, so what I've done is I've right clicked on the mouse to bring up this dialog. The first thing we're going to do is add some new components to the design. Now by selecting this, the tool reads your DesignWare home and you'll see all of the different components that these are available. This can be DesignWare IP, this could be IP exact IP in your search path. So we're going to select for this demo a simple design. We're going to pick the AHB component, we're going to pick the APB component, we're also going to install an AXI as well as the bridge to connect the AXI to the AHB and finally I'm going to put a UART in here to complete the components for our simple subsystem. Next I'll click OK and what the tool is going to do now is read all of these IPs from the library and here what's happened is it doesn't know automatically how to connect. So the tool is prompting you, you could mark this AXI slave interface as unused or we can connect it to one of the two available ports. So I'm going to pick one, click OK, and now we see all of the components that we selected in the subsystem. Okay, so what we see now is the assembled subsystem and we've connected all the components using interfaces. So here you see the AHB bus connected through using the interface to the bridge which connects to the AXI bus. Now in the AXI, since we haven't added a master yet, the red coloring tells us that we need to do something with this IP and the something in this case is to mark at least one master as being used. So what we're going to do is export this AXI master interface. Okay, so now we have the option to give the interface that we're going to export, which in, the, in this case is an AXI master, any name we want. So we're going to go ahead and keep the default name, click OK, and what you'll see on the AXI component here is that we have now exported that master with the name that we selected in the previous dialog. So now what I'm going to do is click OK. And so now what you'll see is that the design, the interfaces have been configured and this impacts all of the different things in the system. So what we've done is we fired up the Core Assembler tool. By default, it comes to the home page here. Now on the home page, you'll notice there's a series of links. The first section is getting started. This is where you would begin the creation of a new design, or if you've already started one, you can open an existing design. In addition to being able to build the design, there's also easy access links that you can simply click on to bring up all of the documentation for the AMBA IP and the different tools that you're using. We also include the release notes and Core Assembler Tools documentation. So what I'll be doing next is starting a new design by clicking on the Create New Subsystem Workspace. When you open this, click on this link, what you see is a dialog comes up to create a new workspace. We can give the workspace any name we want, install the files in any location we want, and give the design a name. Now since we're starting a new workspace, we have the option of creating an implementation or the RTL or a test bench used to verify a design. Once we've set all of these, we simply click on the OK button and it'll bring us to the next window. So now that we've completed configuring the different components in the design, we've done configurations to AXI, we could also have done configurations to the bridge between the AXI and the AHB as well as the APB and the UART that we put in our design. 
So with all the components configured and connected, to move to the next step, we're simply going to click the apply button and the tool will begin checking all of the connections, ensuring everything is legal and compliant with the specifications. So once we've completed adding all the components, we're presented with a report dialog. And what we can do here is simply click on the link and the tool has generated very detailed reports that give you information about the different components you've added in the subsystem, their names, the versions, what interfaces have been exported from the subsystem, all of the detailed connectivity information of the different components in the subsystem, as well as a list of additional ports or interfaces that we're going to need to deal with at a later stage in the design. So I've selected memory map and we've initialized the different registers or the different components with default conditions. Here we can go in and manually override the defaults as well as validate that all of our memory addresses are legal. So once we've finished writing out the configured source code for the components in our design, you're again taken to a report dialog where you'll see there's two main categories of reports. There's reports that are specific to the activities where we can go in and look at the source code that was generated, have a report that shows in very detailed information how the components are configured. We can look at reports in all the registers, the IOs, and also get an area estimation of how big our design is going to be when we implement it. At this stage, we can also generate some other optional views where we can generate header files for software de development, component register headers in the RAL format. So in addition to the reporting of what we've done, we also have the ability to generate some optional files that we'll use for different parts of the design. For example, we can generate a header file for software development, we can generate a RAL file which we'll use later in verification, and also a detailed register report. So with all of the components configured and all the source generated, the next step is to deal with the signals that were not defined as part of an interface. So what Core Assembler does here is it gives you a list of the different sources that were not automatically connected as well as the different loads. And this is the point in the design where you would pick the different sources and loads and tell the tool whether you want them connected, leave them open, connect them through some kind of glue logic, or you could export them from the design. So after having completed all the connections and we have a report documenting all of this, the next step is to generate the top level interconnect RTL for the design. So here we have an option to output Verilog, VHDL, System Verilog, or Verilog 95. We'll just stick with Verilog for the demo, and now we we'll generate the final RTL for this design. So now we've completed gener generating the RTL for our subsystem, and once again, we have reports. We can go through, we can look at all of the source code that was generated for the subsystem. We can also go look at the different IP exact views that are generated for this design, including the components, the components with any generators that are involved, and the design views. So now with the RTL all generated, we could either go in and start implementing the design, targeting either ASIC or FPGA, and the tool will walk you through the different steps, reading the libraries, having you enter the information that the tool needs to generate the scripts to give you the highest quality of results. Additionally, we can go in and generate a test bench so you can start running verification on the system. To wrap up the demo, let's quickly take a look at how the test bench is generated. So, we could go, we could run formal verification, we could start doing static timing analysis, or we can go through and build a test bench. Let's start by building the test bench to wrap up the demo. So, we've opened a new design, and what you're gonna see here are three different windows. 
The first window is what you can think of as a chalkboard. This is going to give you a graphical representation of the design. Over here on the left, you see an activity window. These are the different steps we'll go through as we build the subsystem. And below these two windows, you see the console, which gives you the commands you can see as they're executed as we go through the process of building the design. So now that we've completed the adding the components and configuring components, the next things we need to do is set up the memory map for the subsystem, do detailed component configuration, and deal with the sideband connections as well. So with the memory map initialized, the next step is to go through and do detailed component configurations. Now, of course, every component in a design is going to have different configuration parameters. But what we're showing here with the AXI component is the configuration dialog, which I've selected, and you as the designer have the ability to set up how the logic will be generated for the pipelining stages. It can be either combinatorial, forward registered, or fully registered. You would select the different options for the different components, and then we would move on to the next step of the design. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the AXI component, and I'm going to go down and I'm going to select Edit Interface Parameters. When I click on this, what it does is it brings up a dialog that lets you make configurations to the component. So for example, for my AXI data bus width, I have a pull down menu, which will give me all the legal values for this bus. We pick which value we want, and then we click OK. This is a configuration that sets the interfaces to the different blocks, which is why we do it first. You can think of it as a system configuration. It impacts multiple components in the design. So now we have a VMM test bench, which has been automatically connected and configured. Here you see a clock generator. Next to it, you see the AXI master verification IP component. All of these are connected to the DUT. The DUT is now a hierarchical component in this schematic, which we can click into. And what you see is the design we started with is all contained here and ready to start running simulations on.